If you've never shot film before, right now is the best time to get started with film photography. What's going on you guys? Welcome back to another King Jibs video. And today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys a little bit about why right now is probably the best time to get into film photography. Now with that said, we're gonna be going over a couple of new updates from the film community. We have two new films being released from Kodak as well as Cinestill. And as we make our way through the video, I'll talk a little bit more about how to get started shooting film and you know, what's the best route to go if you are just getting started. Now this episode is brought to you by the good folks over at Squarespace and I'm going to talk a little bit more about them later on in this video but for now let's jump into today's topic. So it's crazy. I literally just filmed an episode talking about my new Leica lens and I opened up Instagram and bam, Kodak says they're releasing Kodak Gold 200 in 120 format. But it doesn't end there, man. Cinestill actually released 400D, which is their new color film. If you guys are interested in the future, hit that subscribe button down below so that you guys can see me cover Kodak Gold 200 in the 120 format or Cinestill 400D. Now with that said, personally, I feel like right now is the best time to get into film because it seems like there's a positive impact happening in the film photography community. At one point, film stocks were just dropping off the shelves, uh, but right now at least it seems like these companies are starting to come out with more film. Now the big question is you guys, how do you get started with film photography? Uh, and the first part is identifying what type of camera you want to shoot. Now there's three different types of cameras that you can buy. The first one being a point and shoot film camera. Now point and shoot film cameras are often smaller and boxy like this one. And uh, they're going to give you that kind of vintage look when you photograph with them. A lot of times these are for casual shooters, for people who just want uh, to document their life on film. Maybe they're going on vacation or they're just gonna go to a party. Whether or not you're serious about photography, the point and shoot film camera is absolutely essential. And even if you don't want to own one, I recommend picking one up anyways and just having it around uh, because you never know when you'll need to have a smaller camera that you can take with you anywhere you go. Now, the good thing about a point and shoot film camera is that they're small. They're often very easy to find. You can find them online. You can find them in thrift stores. If you ask your mom, your dad, your grandparents, aunties, uncles, somebody in your lifeline has a film camera point and shoot. And so maybe pick that up off of them, put some new batteries in it and just go ahead and shoot away. Now, with that said, there are a couple of limitations. The first one being you can't change the lens on the camera. And so depending on the camera that you have, you're going to be stuck with that particular focal length. But if this is new to you and you know, you're just getting into it, honestly, it's probably something that you're not thinking about. But that is the first option, the point and shoot film camera. Uh, if you're just a casual photographer looking to document your life, this is what I would go with. Now the next two options are going to be a little bit more advanced. Uh, maybe you are a little bit more serious about photography and you want to be able to um, pick up a camera that you can grow with that will cover both casual situations all the way to maybe even doing some like paid work on film. Uh, but before we get into these two camera types, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Now I personally made my website through Squarespace and they make it super simple with award-winning templates that you guys can use to get started. They also have different pages that you can set up like your portfolio and gallery page and one of my new favorite features, the appointment page. You can say goodbye to all the confusion around how to book you for a shoot. Just send them over to your website to the appointment scheduling tab and get them set up through there. So if you guys want to get started with your own personalized photography website, head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes and enter promo code kingjapes at checkout to receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or even a website. So huge thank you to Squarespace Man for sponsoring this episode. So like I mentioned, the next two camera types are going to be a little bit more advanced, but you can still learn as a beginner on them. And unlike the point and shoot, you can actually uh, change the lenses. The first type of camera, you guys, is the one that most of you guys have seen already, the SLR. So single lens reflex camera. Now SLR cameras are some of the more common film cameras out on the market. Uh, you have a viewfinder and anything that you see in there is what you're going to get. Uh, it's a very precise tool to use and, and there's tons of SLRs to choose from online. You have options from Minolta, probably the best beginner 
film SLRs in my opinion, the X700, you have the Canon AE-1 program, the Canon A1, the Nikon F3. Uh, if you guys want to check out any of those cameras, I made videos on tons and tons of SLRs here on the channel before. So, you know, if you're just getting started and you want a good place to start, check out some of my videos. I'll leave those in the links in the description below. The advantages to a film SLR is that most of the time they have a built-in light meter and a lot of them have auto modes like program mode or aperture priority. And so, you know, as a beginner, learning exposure and, you know, the relationship between aperture and shutter speed, it can be difficult. But if you just want to get out there and make photographs, you can set your camera to program mode and just shoot away without having to worry about it. Another pro about the film SLR is that there's options for manual focus cameras as well as autofocus. There's a ton of cameras out on the market. So do your research and then, uh, you know, figure out which camera you want. See if the SLR option is good for you. Now, the next option that is on the list here is going to be your rangefinder camera. And the rangefinder camera is something that I don't recommend to beginners because it's really, really hard to learn on them. Now, here is what the rangefinder camera looks like. Uh, aesthetically, I think rangefinders look the best just because of the way they're built and the way they are designed. But there are a ton of different things that can confuse a new film shooter. The first one being most of them are going to be mechanical. So like Leica cameras, this is my M2. It takes zero battery whatsoever. And so in order to expose, you need to know your exposure or you need to use something like Sunny 16. Now, the big distinction about a rangefinder camera is that the viewfinder is going to show you an approximation of what you have in focus. In the viewfinder, you have these frame lines and you're gonna use those frame lines to kind of compose and adjust your image. Now, you might be wondering, you know, how do you focus it? And that's where the rangefinder patch comes into play. Inside of the viewfinder, there is a little ghost patch in the very center, shows you two split images, and all you need to do to catch something in focus is line those two images up to where it looks like one. Now, because, you know, with SLR cameras, you can adjust your focus and see exactly what's in focus in the viewfinder. The rangefinder patch doesn't give you that. It gives you only that rangefinder patch to, uh, you know, tell you that you are in focus. And so a lot of people when getting started can find this confusing as you're not really confirming or seeing with your own eyes what you're gonna be able to have in focus. Now, if you wanna get started with a rangefinder camera as your first 35 millimeter camera, you know, by all means, go ahead and go for it. But personally, the way I learned film photography was through a 35 millimeter SLR. From the SLR, I ended up picking up point and shoots. And as I got more serious about film photography and street photography, I discovered the rangefinder and I learned on there. So if I were to give you kind of like a, an easy route to, to get started with, I think the 35 millimeter SLR is probably the most versatile. They're also on the more budget friendly side. And so if you don't wanna spend a ton of money, you know, go for a nice Minolta X700 or even like a Canon A1, get started with that, pick up a lens or two, um, and you're gonna be covered for anything that comes your way. And the last two things we're gonna talk about is selecting a film to shoot, as well as, you know, finding a place to develop your film. Now, when selecting a film to shoot, it's important to look online and, you know, search different results on different film stocks. Uh, now, I'm gonna give you five of my recommendations just to get started, um, and from there on out, you can go ahead and, you know, experiment with different options. Now, the first option, of course, is going to be Portra 400. This is probably the most popular film stock. And for good reason, it's really, really good and consistent. So definitely try Portra 400. Also give Kodak Gold 200 a shot. Kodak Gold 200, the film that we were mentioning in the beginning that's being made now in 120, um, it's my favorite film stock. So personally, that's something that I love. The third film stock that I would try out is another C41 film, uh, and that's going to be Fuji Superior. Now, Fuji Superior is made in both 200 ISO and 400 ISO, and you can find that at like Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, and so it's probably the most accessible film stock. So if that's something that you want to try out, or maybe you just don't know where to buy film if you don't have a camera store near you, try out Fuji Superior. And the last color film that I will be recommending in this list is Lomo 800. Now, Lomo 800 comes in a three pack. You can find them in camera stores on Amazon, on Lomography's website. Uh, and it's a film stock that I really love as I shot with it for a really, really long time. It's gonna give you good results. And last but not least, I will be recommending one black and white film stock. And so if you do wanna shoot black and white film, the film stock that I would recommend is Ilford HP5. Now, I personally love Ilford HP5 and there's nothing like a classic 
black and white film. There's a certain quality to it. And if you're looking to shoot film and get that, you know, black and white look, HP5 is, in my opinion, the standard. So now that I've given you guys a couple of film stocks to get started with, you need to find a place to get your film developed. Now, rather than talk about where to go exactly, because I don't know where you live, maybe you live on the other side of the world, I will be telling you about where to not go. And folks, it's very simple. Don't get your film developed at a drugstore. There are services offered by both like Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens. And at one point, everyone used to get their film developed there. But as time changed, they're not really good anymore. They don't even develop the film in store. It's not one hour photo anymore. They take your film. It takes two weeks to send to a mass lab to where they develop it. And all you get back is a little CD with your images, which is kind of outdated nowadays. CDs are becoming more and more obsolete, as well as your prints if you order your prints. I don't even think most places give you prints anymore. My recommendation, you guys, is to find the nearest professional film developing lab. Whether you are in Europe, if you're in the States, there are a ton of different labs to go to. Labs that, you know, really specialize in developing film because they will be giving you online scans that are available for you to download. And generally, the turnaround times are a lot faster, taking between three to five days a week at most. So stay away from those drugstore places and get your film developed at a professional lab. But that pretty much wraps up how to get started shooting 35 millimeter film. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And for any of you seasoned veterans that made it to the very end of this episode here, leave a comment down below for you know your best tip about how to get started shooting film, maybe your experience when you got started. I'd love to hear your stories. So thank you guys, man, for tuning into this one. I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, middle to gang. Whew.